Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Why Everyone Plays. It's been over 3 months since the last one which covered Raiden Shogun and I thought it would be fun to get back into it as this series naturally takes a more positive tone than the Why No One Plays series. With Sumeru fast approaching, soon to be in a couple of weeks, the Dendro element will undoubtedly throw a wrench into all conventional understanding of the elemental system, character priorities, and what is considered good or bad. Be that as it may, I still believe today's character will maintain his status as one of the most popular units of all time in light of everything going well for him, even though from a narrative standpoint nothing goes well for him. So let's not waste any more time and talk about why everyone plays Bennett. Just a moment though, if it's alright with you guys, we have a sponsor for today's video, Outplayed. Outplayed is one of the premier video capturing apps for just about every popular game out there, including Genshin. If you ever find yourself pulling off some crazy burst rotation or want to flex off how much damage you can do in a single blow, this is one way to do it. Outplayed automatically captures any interesting highlights during your play or allows you to record manually using a hotkey, which you can then immediately port over to your Discord server or have it uploaded to YouTube, anywhere you feel like sharing. The app also has a built-in video editor if you feel like touching it up a bit before sharing. And the best part is that it works for hundreds of games besides Genshin Impact. You can use it for Among Us, Call of Duty, League of Legends, Valorant, and Minecraft just to name a few. It's downloaded via Overwolf, which most of you likely have already, so just a few clicks and it's ready to go. If you're interested in using Outplayed, feel free to use the link on screen or in the description. It's a very simple but cool app that makes recording highlights easier for you. Thanks again to Outplayed for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. As a member of the original 20 characters released in version 1.0 almost two years ago, holy crap, it's been two years already. Bennett's potential at the time was not fully acknowledged. Despite being a 4-star character that everyone had access to, the general sentiment towards him could be described as prematurely bad. If you were to look at any tier list from back during the release, you would see the likes of Barbara and Chi Chi up in S tier, while characters like Xing Chou, Bennett, and Sucrose were closer to B or even C tier. Of course, with the benefit of hindsight as well as delving deeper into the game, Bennett's low rating was changed in the blink of an eye, becoming one of the strongest characters in the game, or rather he always was, but now we finally saw it, at a time when many of us believed 4 stars were invariably weaker than 5 stars. As the first 4 star of the Why Everyone Plays series, he's also a good example of how members of his lineup can fight on a level playing field in spite of their lower rarity. Unless Hoyle decides to implement some new game changing system, 4 stars have a better chance of performing well by holding either a support or a sub DPS role, not so much a main DPS. That's not to say there aren't good main DPS 4 stars, but considering you have only 1 slot for main and 3 slots for support or sub, it's functionally less likely that you'll be compared to in sheer numbers and more focus will be placed on what you provide to the team. Oh, and of course as usual, character appeal. For Bennett, like other day 1 4 stars, exposure was on the lower side for him. Fortunately though, he received a good amount of involvement in the second Dragon Spine story event. He has a little more time in the spotlight than someone like Chongyun, but certainly nowhere near the same level as that of Shangling or Ningguang, primarily because he's not part of any central authority like the Knights of Favonius or the Qixing. Nevertheless, his insane practical strength gave rise to more awareness of his personality and quirks. After all, if you're using someone on a daily basis, you get to know a thing or two about them. The kid has Spongebob levels of optimism, it's almost kind of creepy. Bennett is a member of what I like to call the Trinity of Fake 5 Stars, comprising himself, Xingqiu, and Shangling, who will receive their own Why Everyone Plays episodes in the future. What separates them from the rest of their peers is how inexplicably strong their attributes are. As the category name implies, these units could very well have been 5 stars that it's almost inconceivable for them to be forced. Not that anyone's complaining, mind you, but for anyone who's picking up Genshin for the first time, you can get a lot done with these three. There are other highly valued 4 stars, but these three take the cake, and they eat it too, especially Bennett. While other supports make themselves known in unique ways, Bennett quite literally brute forces his way into relevance through good old stats. At a fundamental level, that's really all he does. He amps up your team's baseline to such an extreme that even though several other units can more or less achieve the same applicable outcome, he does it in the least cumbersome way possible, making him one of the most efficient and cost-effective supports in the game. True, for number crunching and thinking of the most optimal sweaty gamer tryhard scenarios, then you could make a case for him not being all that great. Then again, even in those circumstances, he probably still would be a high contender. But the biggest factors behind a support's performance are consistency, accessibility, and efficiency. What Bennett provides to your team are two things, damage bonus and sustain, among other things, but those are the two factors of import for this argument. On top of doing honestly pretty solid damage itself, like the actual attack, Fantastic Voyage lasts for 12 seconds on the ground and juices up your active member's attack by up to 139% of Bennett's base attack through conventional means. On his own, Bennett has a base of 191, and with Skyward Blade having 608, that's a total of around 800 for the sake of rounding up. Alternatively, if you want just raw attack, then Aquila Favonia ranks in at 674 for 865. 865 times 1.39 totals just over 1200. 1200 attack. For comparison, Hu Tao's Guide to Afterlife is a massive attack steroid based on her max HP. Assuming the average Hu Tao has 30k, she can get up to 2145 attack. 
and Hun Tao is one of the strongest damage dealers in the game. Considering Ben is a 4 star character and requires unironically just himself and a weapon with high attack, an attack boost of even a thousand is incredible, much less the conditions required to get it. Bennett has essentially the best gas mileage out of any character in the game by leaps and bounds, as no one can reach maximum efficiency with so little investment. Not kidding, the only thing you need on Bennett for him to juice up your entire team's attack power by roughly half of Hu Tao's elemental skill is level 90, constellation 1, and a high attack sword. You don't even need a 5 star weapon. Festering Desire plus his base attack is 700 times 1.4 that's 980. The attack bonus alone relative to the amount of investment needed would have been enough for him to be in consideration for one of the best support units in the game since every character needs attack and will always need attack. Hence why I believe, even with the incoming Dendro element, there's no way in hell Bennett will fall out of relevance unless there's straight up a 5 star version of him who does exactly the same things he does for the exact same investment. And that's just the attack bonus. To put things into perspective, the reason Bennett's attack boost is valued so much more even if other supports can theoretically contribute more total damage output is because attack is universal. Like I said, every character needs attack. Well, besides maybe Yelan. Doesn't matter if you're a Catalyst user or a Bow user, attack bonus benefits everyone. Even health scalers like Hu Tao benefit from the extra attack, although in her case, since she gets stronger when at low HP, Fantastic Voyage's healing is a bit counterproductive. Even then, the attack bonus is so OD that you can still put them on the same team if you really want to. Regardless, this allows Bennett to fit into virtually any team composition you can think of, or rather not any team composition, every team composition. He's a stable pick for national teams, hyper carry teams, taser teams, soup teams, even chain freeze teams believe it or not, so long as you don't unlock C6. For every popular team composition right now, Bennett is either best in slot or a fantastic alternative as there's not a single arrangement of characters that do not benefit from attack in some way, shape, or form. The most noteworthy instance of this would be that of the national team and its variants. Ordinarily, the one theoretical drawback of Bennett's Fantastic Voyage is that it can only ever sustain the offensive augmentation on whoever is actively taking the field at that time. It can only give the attack boost to one person, that is unless they're playing in co-op. But there's something in Genshin called snapshotting which refers to the state in which attributes are fixed on a long-lasting effect, ability, entity, or summon based on the character's attributes during the ability's activation. Snapshotting is what allows a character like Shanling to perform significantly more effectively than what many would initially anticipate as her elemental burst Pyronado has its total damage calculated based on the circumstances during when it was brought out, even after those circumstances are no longer in play. In layman's terms, the attack bonus from Fantastic Voyage, inadvertently, is able to affect multiple members of a single party simultaneously. So if the conditions are right, that 1000 or so attack bonus can potentially become a collective 4000 attack bonus, albeit only for a short time. That said, I'd like to see an occurrence where you're unable to one-shot whatever stands in your way during the 12 seconds it's up for. Let's say you have a party consisting of Ganyu, Kazuha, Bennett, and Shangling. Casting Fantastic Voyage on the ground first, you then swap to Kazuha and activate Kazuha Slash. Kazuha's elemental burst is also a snapshot ability, meaning its periodic damage sustains the attack bonus from Bennett even after he swaps out. Moreover, the elemental damage bonus from Kazuha Slash is snapshotable as well. So you then switch to Shangling to activate Pyronado, which is augmented considerably by both Bennett's attack boost and Kazuha's elemental damage boost. Finally, you swap to Ganyu and activate Celestial Shower, gaining all benefits at once. Thanks to this, Bennett's elemental burst has successfully applied to Kazuha's ultimate, Shangling's ultimate, and Ganyu's ultimate for their entire durations, magnifying everyone's DPS to an extreme degree since you're essentially giving half of the attack bonus from Hu Tao's Guide to Afterlife to the rest of your team. That's one of many scenarios that showcase what Fantastic Voyage's attack boost is capable of, even if you don't abuse Snapshot, giving just your main DPS that bonus would be enough for him. But of course, he does more than that. Despite offering such an immense boost in your team's offensive pressure, he grants an equal amount of survivability as well, courtesy of the persistent regeneration from the same Fantastic Voyage. Several times in the past, I brought up the issue surrounding healers being victims of circumstance in Genshin. Units like Barbara and Chi Chi are objectively good characters in that they competently perform the job expected of them. If your goal is to survive heavy damage, those two can do that for you no sweat. It's just that right now, there's no situation where you need healing to that extent. So, to be viable in the present quote-unquote meta, even though there isn't one, characters have to do more than just healing. For example, Diona's elemental burst regenerates her team, but she also supplies cryo damage over time, lower stamina costs, bonus movement speed, and with Constellation 6, you get bonus elemental mastery above 50% health. 200 EM is nothing to scoff at, but when pitted against the overwhelming raw attack boost that is Fantastic Voyage, it's just no contest. Understandably, Bennett's healing may not reach the same level as the likes of Barbara or Chi Chi, but he doesn't need to. Even with no supplemental healing bonus, he'll be recovering around 3000 per second. In fairness, he can only heal one person at a time, so if your entire party gets hurt through stuff like corrosion from Rift Towns, then you may need some backup, but my point still stands. 
Bennett restores more than enough, especially in light of how much damage he provides the entire team. And for the rest, just dodge. But let's assume you're still in need of more healing for whatever reason. Fantastic Voyage is a persistent effect, so it can be stacked with other buffs. If you so choose, you may cast Diona- Oh my god, I did it again. <laughs> okay, so earlier I mispronounced her name as Diona. I keep doing that, it's like Diona, Diona. Alright. Anyways, if you so choose, you may cast Diana's Elemental Burst right on top of Bennett's Burst and you'll have both healing fields active at the same time. That's what makes Bennett so freaking good. Fantastic Voyage doesn't conflict with anything or get in the way of anything. There's no way you can miss timing, mess up rotations, etc. One might assume a major downside to it is that it's position locked, but thanks to snapshotting, if you cast everything inside the circle, the damage boost remains even after exiting. You just need to be more precise on your execution. Actually, wait, I lied. Technically, there is a way his elemental burst can mess things up, but we're grasping at straws at that point. Constellation 6 has been a point of contention among the player base during the first year or so of Genshin's release. While it provides a noteworthy boost in pyro damage to anyone standing in it, it also imbues melee characters with pyro. On one hand, the extra pyro damage is a welcome treat, especially for pyro teammates like Yuemiya and Shangling. On the other, the forced infusion can work against anyone who doesn't want their normal attacks infused with pyro. But nowadays, I believe everyone has reached the conclusion that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. There aren't that many DPS units who rely solely on melee attacks of a specific element for the bulk of their damage. The only ones that immediately come to mind for me are Kuching and Yula. Even for those who do rely on their normals, most of them have infusions that cannot be overridden. Shogun's elemental burst is electro-locked, Shao's burst is animal locked, and he uses punching attacks anyway. Ayato's elemental skill is hydro-locked. Essentially, most characters have elemental infusions that can't be overridden anyway, so it's a win-win. Okay, I think I got the point across. Fantastic Voyage is broken. I'm pretty sure Hoyle wasn't thinking things through enough when they designed this ability. His DPS enhancing potential is self-evident, but that in and of itself isn't the only reason everyone likes to use him. The rest comes from, once again, his accessibility and efficiency. He's a 4-star character, which means even free to plays have access to him, and if memory serves, he was a reward a few times. Typically, 4-stars are not recognized until you max out their constellations, or at least for most of them. For maximum efficiency, you need constellation 6 on Shinsho, same for Diona, Sucros, Kujo Sada, Rosaria, Fischl, Noel, Goro, so on, and so forth. Shangling doesn't have to go all the way, but you want at least C4 for the extra duration. Point being, 4 stars take a while. They're certainly nowhere near as exorbitant as a 5-star. If you're lucky enough, you can get about... Mm, 4 to 5 copies of a 4 star in about 100 bucks as opposed to 1 copy every 2 to 400. Not to mention Paimon's bargains and events that hand him out for free. Venice constellations, while nice to have, are not conducive to what he needs to do. The only one needed to achieve full functionality on him is C1, Grand Expectation. Lifting the HP restriction on his attack buff so it applies unconditionally. At bare minimum, that's all you need. An argument can be made for C5 since an extra 3 levels on Fantastic Voyage means more attack, but it's not something to bust out the old Benjamins for. We already went over how the only thing that requires any significant investment is his weapon. Obviously, the 5-star swords have more base attack than 4-stars. Additionally, artifacts are extremely easy for Bennett. Unlike Shinto who requires a hefty amount of investment in damage-centric stats, Bennett does very little damage himself. Granted, the burst damage from his Q can do some pretty decent work, but all of Bennett's offensive pressure comes in the form of a buff, so stuff like crit rate and damage is of less import to him. Passion Overload is a very short cooldown skill that gets even shorter when used in Fantastic Voyage, so he has no trouble serving as his own battery. Plus, more often than not, you'll find him paired up with one other pyro character, most likely Shangling due to how well they synergize with each other. So, whatever energy Shangling produces funnels into him and vice versa. That's primarily why those two need less CR than Xingqiu in comparison. All in all, Bennett is ridiculously overtuned. He's not very intricate or complex as a character, very simple to understand. But what he does is so valuable for a lot of teams and so inexpensive that he doesn't need to do any more than that. High damage boost and good healing, that's really all you need at the end of the day. With Dendro and his reactions incoming, there may be new situations that require more than just damage and sustain, but I seriously doubt that will be enough to knock him off anyone's roster. Remember, his damage boost and healing are only one part of the equation. The other part is how easy he is to get to an optimal level. Like I said, the only time I can see Bennett getting power corrupt is if you take Bennett, copy paste him, turn him into a 5 star with better scaling, more base stats, etc. Honestly, were that to happen, Bennett would still be a top tier. Yelan and Xingqiu share a similar purpose of being hydro conduits to the main DPS and they get along famously with each other. Now imagine if we had two Bennett's. There were many supports that have been released throughout Genshin's lifetime that have quickly risen to the top of everyone's list. Kazuha, Shogun, Yelan, and none of them have replaced Bennett. I like to think of him as carbs. Rice, pasta, bread, stuff like that. Not the flashiest part of a meal, but something would feel terribly wrong without it. Widely available, cheap, and convenient. In retrospect, it's almost hilarious how many of us dismissed him as bad during the early days of the game. 
But anyways, that's going to be it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter at VarsRam, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other Why Everyone Plays episodes if you haven't yet. Till next time though, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.